Picasso, Rodin, Gauguin. I react to each. Okay, for me, Picasso is kind of like a spiritual godfather for me, you know, because he was a kind of spirit guide when I was young. Um, so Picasso, you say... Rodin. Rodin, I discovered late, a bit later, and he was then my sculptural kind of godfather. He was really the one that taught me about the kind of power of clay, the power of plaster, the ability for objects to have uh, references to deep history and still feel very present, this kind of idea. And for me, Gauguin, um, I always loved um, these colors in Gauguin, these magical colors, these strange blues and yellows. And so, in a weird way, what you get from Gauguin is the right to be completely in a fantasy. But Gauguin is also about primitivism. Yeah, but I'm not in primitivism. I don't, I don't believe uh, in primitivism. I think, um, I think what I liked about Gauguin was the idea when he built like these architectural spaces, you know, this Maison du Soleil. Ah, of these course. Things. But I think um, primitivism is complicated. I don't think, I don't think it ever really existed. Just another n name, Brancusi. One can see Brancusi here. One hundred percent. And and I, and I think, for me, in each room, you can really see certain sculptural ideas and certain sculptural um, influences um, I kind of unpacked, I made sense of. Because I think in the 21st century, we had, we had two things. We had the 20th century ending, so everything was over, death of everything. You remember, death of the painter, death yes. of the artist, death of the author. And in the 21st century, because we, we keep living, of course, there was the idea that we had to make sense again of being alive, I think, culturally, or else we really did die. And so Brancusi? Is, is about birth. And what I realized with Brancusi is Brancusi, the sculpture is reaching out into the world. And people don't realize that. He's in fact the father of modern architecture and the idea of modern public spaces. And I, I believe that. Van Gogh. Van Gogh, for me, was... You know, there were three or four artists when I was a young guy who kind of helped me make sense of myself and, and, make, and give me the permission to be an artist. For me, in Van Gogh, you have this relationship between drawing and painting and between process and, in a way, study and, in a way, finished work. And the idea that looking at something in a weird way is not so simple. But you look like Van Gogh. I look like Van Gogh, yeah. It's like a, 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 a bizarre happenstance. <laughs> Is that sexy? Yeah. No, it's great. It's great, but it's a bit disturbing at times because, you know, the madness and all oh, of that. Ah, of course. <laughs> Monumentality. Monumentality is a really interesting thing because sculpture, the space for sculpture is being destroyed. Architecture has taken over this role, but it's a mistake. Not that I'm against architecture, I'm for architecture, but the idea that architecture has become sculptural and has taken over public space completely is really a problem. Sculptural space, meaning pointless space, meaning in a weird way, sacred space, and also ridiculous space is essential for humans. So my plan as a sculptor was to reach out to the world or to try. And because I'm from Leeds and because I have this unbelievable dogged spirit, I'm really a kind of, in this way, I have a kind of unbelievable stamina and all this very Yorkshire stuff. I tried to reach out. I tried to make sculptures that would speak to a public and that could occupy a social space. But you are destined to failure, and that's okay. And that's why in the show there's a melancholy too. Music. Music for me is the most important um, art form um, which complements sculpture. Music for me is a dance with sculpture. I think musicians, I'm, I'm friends with a lot of musicians. Like who? Uh, well, in the movie you see both Kamasi Washington plays 
and flee from the Red Hot Chili Peppers plays the bass. So I have two musicians in the, in the I have three musicians. So my, I'm friends with musicians. Musicians are super sympathetic to sculptors. They love sculpture. They understand how music reacts, sound reacts. And when I'm working, I listen to music all the time. So I really love music. I really, I mean, in a weird way, I can't live without it. And you hang out with musicians all the time? Yeah, yeah. And, 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 the, and, the, and when I made the final piece, my friends who were musicians really asked me to be involved in it. They really say, you know, please, I have to be involved. And for me, it was obvious they had to be involved. And so you see here the, in that piece the, the complete uh, marrying of the forms. When they play in the sculpture, this, neither form fights the other. They, they embrace Sculpture and music really embrace, like nothing else. But it's more rock than... Uh, no, no. It's everything? Music, classical music. If I had a friend who was a classical musician, it would be fantastic too. But I have a friend who's a, who's a, bass, who's a rock musician, I have a friend who's a jazz musician. But they both, I mean, Flea plays, you'll see, he plays a solo music in, in the piece and it's so beautiful. It's unbelievably beautiful. And Kabasi plays with, with, uh, with his teacher who's a harp player, wow. and it's heartbreaking. It's just incredibly beautiful. Anxiety. I am someone who suffered from very acute trauma. As a, as a, as a, already as a baby, I had post-traumatic stress disorder. So I have grown up and lived with, with very intense traumatic uh, bodily stuff. So there are two ways you can go if you have this experience. You can become uh, an... Uh, you become a terrible person, you become a monster, uh, or you are in a way propelled, you are kind of push burning. So I, I think to, for me it was essential to become an artist, to be able to work out how I was feeling and to equalize my energy with the world through art. So I think um, this anxiety is, is intrinsic to my nervous system, And I think the final sculpture in the show, the final room of the show, is in a weird way the beginning of my victory over trauma. Wow, your new life? The beginning of a new life. And I was really saved um, in the last year and a half. And, and in a way able to have a new perspective. And, uh, and the sculpture is about that. And since when is the new life? Well, when I met Mona, it began, so it began six years ago. And then together, we, we worked together on, on everything together. And then about a year and a half ago, I began somatic experiencing. And that was the real beginning of the very deep work. And this work you can see in the sculpture. The end is always the same, death. Was that death? Yeah, again, because of the way my childhood played, I kind of was born and died at the same time, in a weird way. And so I grew up always with a very acute uh, fear, as we talked about anxiety. And behind that anxiety was uh, this terror surrounding violence and this terror surrounding loss of my own body and loss of my own boundaries. So um, in my work, this kind of death uh, energy or this kind of sense of despair meaning an ending which shouldn't happen is always present it's always dancing between these two places and so you you, you really feel moments of release like i think this room me and fabrice believe this is the room where you recharge your your energy in yes because it's love and life i'm trying to focus on but there are rooms where you really feel despair, you really feel blackness. And art, you know, art was in a very ironic period when I was in my life. The, the irony was a kind of um, mode. And I couldn't get to irony because I had this feeling of death constantly, this terror of death. And this But you have it less today. Yeah, because of this work. In the last year and a half, I really began to reorient myself towards death. And about the paintings, the black paintings, right? The black paintings were like climbing out of one body into another. You know when a snake loses its skin? When I worked on those paintings, I kind of, I kind of died and was reborn. Wow. And I mourned the death of Michael Stanley, and I mourned my past life, I mourned my divorce, I mourned uh, how lost I'd been in my life. 
and I mourned the loss of this friend I loved. And in a way, I, I confronted all of that in those paintings. And in a weird way, you, you get to leave it in the paintings in some way, you know what I mean? Yes. It was excellent.